Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. We all love sports and our local teams. Otherwise, we wouldn't watch or do this show, especially when we went months without a game actually being played. But now we've got something more important going on in our country and on our planet. I voted today, driving 45 minutes each way and another hour or so to actually vote. I may not like the candidates or the issues or some of the behavior we've seen, but I still felt good when I left the building and not because I didn't think my vote would actually make a difference. I felt good about the whole thing because this is America, the greatest country in history. If that changes in November, that's our fault. I do know this, no matter what side you're on in November, we better get together and figure out a way to make this thing work when it's all said and done. If not, that's our fault too. We've got Tom Withers here from the Associated Press. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. Gotta be louder, Brian. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine on a Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 25th consecutive season. And, of course, powered by Cleveland.com. One of our favorite guys uh, in the media here, or anywhere for that matter, Tom Withers, who is, uh, they say on 92.3, the fan. If uh, Tom Withers, It's not news until Tom Withers says it. That is pressure on you, young man. I live with that every day, Les. It, it's a tough one to take. Andy Baskin threw that on me a couple of years ago, and uh, I'm honored he would say something like that. So great to see you. Yeah, great, great to see you also. I, I do have a question. I don't want to turn this into a political thing because that's impossible to do these days. I understand there's an election coming up, right? Does anybody, anybody, so I heard. anybody know anything about that? Yeah. So this is not to be political, but have you, since President Trump has been President Trump, have you, have you heard hail to the chief? Well, that's a great question. I've heard um, macho man and YMCA in the last week, but <laughs> I haven't heard hail to the chief at one of his rallies. So that, that's a great point. As you know, I, that was always kind of part of the pomp and circumstance, right? Anytime you saw the president, that was played before he came out. And you would think that particular president would want to play more than anybody. <laughs> <laughs> But again, yeah, I, break up the band. you know what happened? I, I told this story the other night on the air. I have um, a flag up on my garage, American flag. And I have neighbors on each side. And the one says, well, I didn't think you'd be a Republican. And the next one says, you're voting for Biden? Since when does putting up a flag? I'm putting it up because it's America, the greatest country ever invented. And people are assuming it means something more than that. And to me, it doesn't. But I don't know. Do you think you, I should have put it up with a little asterisk saying what that what this means? It means I love my country. Yeah, that, that's been part of my experience as well, Les. And that's the, and I don't, I don't want to make this political either, but if there's one disappointment to me is that we can't even have civil disagreements or, or conversations anymore. It's just everybody kind of jumps to one side or the other, and um, that's the shame of it. And I just hope, like you said in your opening, I hope we can get beyond that in the next couple of weeks. All right, so let's talk football for a minute or, or 58. Uh, Odell Beckham sent, sent back home. It's, it's not uh, the virus. What is it? Well, we don't know what it is right now, Les. We're not going to know probably until um, sometime in the early morning. He, he came in today to work and was not feeling well. And I think, you know, as you know, you've heard this expression so much now that it's become almost cliche. Um, out of an abundance of caution, the Browns sent him home. So... Uh, he was tested again for COVID. Uh, we'll get those results, like I said, tomorrow morning. But I think, you know, what people are doing now, especially as we go into the cold and flu season, if you're feeling anything that's that's not normal, if you've got a headache, if you've got sniffles, anything like that, I think a lot of employers are just going ahead and, and, and sending their employees home. So, yeah, just another, <laughs> just another wrinkle in what's already been a crazy season for the Browns. Yeah. All right. Well, it never, I, it, it never was a situation where you needed to know who the healthy guys were because it didn't matter much. No, that, that's exactly right. And I mean, in, the, in this craziest of years, the Browns being four and one, I guess, fits right in with 2020. So, um, you know, they have had 
an unbelievable rash of, of injuries and misfortune almost since training camp began. I mean, when you think yeah. about, you know, Grant Delpit going down and then Kevin Johnson with a lacerated liver and then Mac Wilson's injury and then Nick Chubb, and it's just been on and on down the road. And um, the offensive coordinator, Alex Van Pelt, was even saying today, it seems to be the theme of this season, asking backups and third stringers to step up. And, you know, fortunately for the Browns to this point, they really haven't missed a beat. And I got to give a lot of credit to, Kevin Stefanski and that coaching staff were keeping things together despite the adversity so far. No question about it. 216-575-0403 is the number to call if you want to reach Tom Withers. You can also email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail.com. Tom, one of the, the neat things, and we haven't, haven't even touched on it for 20 years, so I'm not sure we realize how neat it was. When you, when you get these games going back-to-back, -back, and a lot, a lot of people are forgetting – there was a win against Cincinnati in there in Washington. We're not talking about Super Bowl potential champions, but that still doesn't mitigate, is that the right word? doesn't change the, uh, the fact that, that excitement is going on throughout the city. So um, the, the, the question I, or the thing that I thought about is that the weather here, I think we all know the weather is bad two, three months a year. But when the Browns are like this and winning, it's sort of, Takes, it slows down the winter a little <laughs> bit. To me, it does anyway, because I can't for wait sure. for the next game to come. I can't wait to see how they're going to win it uh, or lose it, for that matter. They're not, they're not going to run the table here. But you, the weather seems to be not as bad as it has been in past. I tend to agree with you, Les. There's that, that feeling, and I guess the only thing we can equate it to around here over the last 20 years is, is Buckeye football, right? So once they would win their game on Saturday, you'd kind of – you know, live through that on Sunday and then Monday. And then the next thing you know, it's Wednesday and you're already looking ahead to the same, the next opponent. So I'm with you. I think it, I think the winter does feel a little bit warmer when the Browns are playing better. And I don't have to tell you, it's been 26 years since they've been in this position. And um, I, I, I guess I'm not that surprised to be honest with you, Les. I mean, I, I did think that they would have a tough time with Indianapolis last week, but I thought this team was talented enough that they should be at least three and two at this point, based on the schedule, you know, given that they played Cincinnati and, and, and Washington along here, and they're winning their home games, which is what you have to do. So um, I've been very impressed. I've been very impressed um, with Stefanski since day one. And then, you know, never mind all the things, all the obstacles he's had to deal with given with this pandemic. So um, yeah, I, you know, the weather feels better. Everything feels a little bit better when the Browns are winning around here. Tom Weathers of his associated press is here. How about Baker Mayfield? They, they, if you're watching the game at home, they make the announcement about Dak Prescott and you see that he's in bad shape. And within minutes, you see uh, Baker Mayfield taking a hit. And I don't think the uh, announcers or the producers or whoever is in charge of that let it, kept us up to date enough on that because we didn't hear anything about it. But number one, that shows you how important one guy is to a team. And it also, everybody's uh, f f Browns fans, they had to hold their heart because Baker Mayfield was on the verge of being wiped out. Yeah, you're, you're right, Les. To your point, it really does underscore the fragility of a season. And as soon as Baker went over to the sideline, I immediately put my binoculars on him. And they were checking, like, his collarbone area and his chest before they took him into the medical tent. So that's why I asked that question to both him and Stefanski this week was, was that injury specific to the ribs? Because it looked to me like he took a blow down that entire side and he was shaking his right hand and he talked afterward after the game about the awkwardness of landing on his wrist. And so I think that whole right side right now is just really sore for him. And it's a matter of, you know, kind of working through that. And I asked Stefanski again today about whether this would be a pain tolerance thing or a flexibility mobility thing. And I think all those things are intertwined right now. Um, we did not get to see Mayfield in practice today because they were, they were pushed indoors because of the weather. But yesterday while we were out there for the 10 or 15 minutes, that we were outside to watch him. He looked very ginger, even in just the way yeah. he moved around without doing much. You could tell that he was still hurting. So hopefully this time off will will get him right and make sure that he's out there on Sunday. I think the thing that I was most concerned with is that uh, it's okay if, if he get, gets hurt or get dinged as the, they did in the old days. Uh, if you take him out and put somebody in for a, a series or two, um, that that's not a big deal. It used to be the qu quarterback never wanted to give up the ship. I understand that. But in, in this case, if, if you're going to keep Baker in and you're going to have to make something happen offensively, you, you have to make something happen offensively. 
as opposed to just handing the ball off, which you could have done also if you wanted to. You could have handed it off. But if you felt it was good enough to, to pass and take a hit, so be it. No, absolutely. But, I, you know, the kid has shown us that he's absolutely as, as tough as nails. You know, he's played through some some pretty, not severe injuries, but, but ones that would sideline you and I, that's for sure, over the last couple of years. So, um, you know, I would expect him to be out there. And I think, again, Less as we talked about in the offseason, I think in Case Keenum, you know, they've got a guy that they can put out there if need be. Now, granted, you know, you'd love to have Baker out there, especially with the way that he's he's connecting with Landry and and with Beckham so far this year. And he's finally starting to, you know, use Austin Hooper a little bit more. So you want Mayfield out there. But in, in Keenum, you've got a guy who's made 62 starts. And if he has to go, he has to go. It's just the way that it is. And, you know, like I said to you before, it just seems to be the theme of this Browns team this week, this year. So it wouldn't shock me at all if Case Keenum went out there on Sunday and, and found a way to get it done if he had to. You mentioned how impressed you were early on with Kevin Stefanski. What is it about him that makes you feel that way? You know, just the confidence that he has, Les. He, he really seems to be unflappable. Um, this is a guy who put in, uh, you know, obviously 13 years on that Viking staff and, and made it through numerous regime changes and, and worked his way up from basically being an administrative all the way to the offensive coordinator. So he's done everything there. I don't think anything has really surprised him. I mean, again, you know, nobody saw a global pandemic coming, but this guy has been able to kind of you know, to handle that with, with an ease and a confidence that I'm not sure we've seen out of many coaches around here. You know, I'd have to go back to probably, you know, Butch Davis in terms of a guy with, with the expansion Browns that has been able to kind of, you know, be a leader and, and really command a room. And I see that in Stefanski and for, for him only to be 38 and, and being able to, to, to deal with the things that he's had to deal with already speaks a lot about his preparation and, and the person that he is. So, um, you know, it's been difficult having to deal with him on, on Zoom calls every day only because you don't get the person-to-person the -person exchange and really get to know somebody. But, again, I've, I've been really impressed with just about everything about him so far. I, I think what he's done is he's made it clear that if you're if you're uh, injured and you come off and you you come back to the squad, you better be ready to play. We, we don't owe you anything. You know, if you want to yeah, play, not, you, you know, he doesn't play. like to talk about injuries. He doesn't like to talk about injuries either, Les, which I don't I don't mind. Um, and I, I I must say as well, I've, I've been impressed with his play calling. You know, I think we all um, fancy ourselves to be play callers on Sunday trying to, to second guess the coach or the offensive coordinator, whatever the case may be. But, you know, he's kept um, defenses on their toes and really had them second guessing and, you know, a couple of trick plays mixed in here and there. And you know, there's times where it feels like maybe they should run it and he passes it and, and vice versa. So um, again, um, you know, after five games, I, I can't say more good things about the guy. Okay. Just let me go back to Mayfield for a minute. You expect him to be, to re be ready to play, somehow play on Sunday? I do. I think he'll be out there. He's got to be. I would think. <laughs> he better be. Better the be. other problem. There you go. The other problem now, Les, is that they don't have a third quarterback. You know, right. Garrett Gilbert was signed by, by Dallas off of the practice squad. So I think if anything, I'd be worried about Case Keenum's elbow over the next couple of days because he's getting every single rep there is in practice right now. I would think, if, in fact, if anybody asks you what Les thinks about certain things, will you de facto answer for me? I would think if you have two quarterbacks like that, send them on different buses to the game. Send them in, you know, 10, 10 uh, you, you want some uh, distancing, social distancing, put them 10 yards away. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, 10 floors away from each other. Keep keep Keenum away from uh, Baker as far away as you well, can. Well, you know, that's not, that's not that far-fetched because teams were talking about that before the year because of the pandemic was, was keeping their quarterbacks separated from each other right. from that very fact because – if one of them was sick, you don't want to get the whole group sick. So um, unless I always, anybody asks me what, what do you think of it, I always pass along that information. Don't worry. I appreciate that very much. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and Les Levine with new content posted each and every day. We uh, post a question in the morning. You answer it all day long. We talk about it on the air from 6 until, six, until uh, 6.30 until 7 Eastern time right here on uh, cleveland.com. We'll come back in a moment. Tom Withers with us from the Associated Press. Presque Isle Downs and Casino has sports betting. 
Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Do you like Ohio State football? Would you like to get information from me, Doug Maurice, about Ohio State football without having to look at my face? We have got the plan for you. Become an Ohio State text subscriber through cleveland.com. You send a text, 614-350-3315. What do you get? Two, three, four texts right in your phone every day about Ohio State football. Inside information, polls, voting. All kinds of things. You can be on our podcast. We take X subscriber questions on our Buckeye Talk podcast every week. If you really want to be involved with Ohio State football, in season or out of season, become an Ohio State tech subscriber from Cleveland.com. Send a text to 614-350-3315. 14-day free trial. What do you have to lose? $3.99 a month after that. 614-350-3315. I'll see you in your phone. Tri-C is here for you. Now more than ever, you need a post-secondary education. So I encourage you to start your journey here at Tri-C. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, Tri-C is where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Check out birthdays for today. Mel Harder, who uh, not only was a great pitcher, had his number retired, was a great uh, pitching coach for the Tribe. Ernie Green, uh, running back, uh, back in the Jim Brown days. Milt Morin, tight end. Jim Palmer, one of the all-time greats, Ernest, earnestly speaking, uh, 1947. And Spencer Drango, born in uh, 1992. 216-575-0403, this date in sports history. Uh, Kirk Gibson hits the pinch hit, walk-off home run, game one of the World Series. Of Dennis Eckersley, the uh, Dodgers would win the series uh, four to one over the A's. Wow, one, one of the Tom, one of the great moments in all sports history, right? Visually and everything else. Yeah, what was Buck's call? I, I can't believe what I've just seen, right? I can't I mean, believe what I just you know, saw. Yeah, you know, Gibson basically limped up to the plate, could barely run the bases. I remember as he got to home plate, you know, Lasorda was telling everybody not to touch him because. He was kind of fragile at the moment. So yeah, one of the one of the great moments in baseball history. It was um, last that was my first year working on the UPI desk in New York, and um, I was one of the people that was on the phone with the ballpark when um, that that pitch happened and the home run was hit wow. because a writer had to send the story in before the game ended. Then you would update the story as the ninth inning would unfold. And so I was on the phone with the guy, and I think he, I think he dropped an F bomb or two as as Gibson swung only because he had to start writing, you know, basically from scratch at that point. Your whole career could have ended on that first night. <laughs> it might have actually. <laughs> Maybe you do. We'll never know what your career would have been without without exactly. that. Exactly. Uh, got a question? Only you can answer this. Um, the other day in the Plain Dealer, there was a picture of Tito Fr Terry Francona. I still refuse to call him Tito because I knew him, knew his father as a player. Um, right. There's a picture of him, of Francona, sitting there, at, maybe at the batting cage, and there's Chris Antonetti with his sunglasses on, and it says Chris Antonetti, GM. And I, I swore that was you instead of Chris Antonetti. Has anybody sa said <laughs> that to you? No, I don't. I don't. I don't make any decisions for the Indians at all. I'm not taking the blame for anything. Is that what you're? you're, you're 
you're putting something on me, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, as long as we got you on that, what do you do with uh, Francisco Lindor? <sighs> I think you're in a bind now, Les. I think you've waited long enough that you you pretty much have to make that trade. And, you know, I did ask Antonetti that when we had him on the phone last week as, you know, have you, have you resigned yourself to having to trade him now? And he says he doesn't think of it that way. But, I mean, what else are you going to do, Les? I mean, you know, obviously the, the window is, is really short now. Um, he has clearly shown that he's not willing to sign – a long-term extension here because the Indians can't offer him the money that he's probably going to be able to get from whoever it might be. And I, I just wonder too, how much that market has shrunk for him because of the pandemic. I don't know. I don't think a lot of baseball teams know fiscally how they're going to look in 2021 just yet. And so, um, you know, I don't think he's going to get that $4 million, $400 million contract that he thought about, but I'm sure somebody's still going to be able to pay him 300 million plus and that's yeah, probably you know, not going to be the end so some of these um some of these agents are phenomenal in how they just assume you 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 believe that number is there 400 million 300 million 250 whatever and he hasn't played like that guy uh so far this year but that doesn't mean the dollars have have changed i think that he's he's set it up or his agent has set it up how much he's worth and that's what they're going to stick to but i and i wouldn't put him and this is not sour grapes because he may not be here, and I loved watching him play. Um, I'm not sure that uh, uh, that that he's in the top ten players of the, in the uh, base in major leagues right now. I, I just picked that number out of a hat, but I don't think he's been a top tenner. He certainly wasn't this year, and that's you know that thing. The thing about Jose Ramirez and the way he played this year, I thought really as much as anything shined a light on Lindor not performing up to his level. So. I agree with you there. I think, unfortunately, too, Les, from the Indian standpoint, is that to your point about that those numbers being thrown out there by agents, I think Lindor has listened to that, sadly. And I think he's he's kind of priced himself out of, of, of staying here. Um, you know, I, I think Antonetti, I think he's going to make another run at him just to see if, if, if his opinion of the Indians has changed or, or, or maybe just because of the the world that we're living in now, maybe he wants to get that financial security before, you know, risking going out there on the free agency market. So I don't know. It looks to me like all signs point to them trying to find a deal this winter to, you know, to get a position player or two. Goodness knows. I think they, I think it's pretty obvious they need an outfielder um, that can drive in some runs. So I think you should be able to find that. It's just going to be interesting to see whether or not they want to do it this winter or, or go into next season with him and then try to make a move, you know, before the, the trading deadline in July, assuming that it's going to be in July. I don't even think we know exactly when the baseball season is going to start at this point. I, I think you picked up on the fact that I'm really mixing up my fastball with my curve and I'm hitting you with some real poignant questions and then coming back with the germane stuff. So I'm going to throw one in here. You, just between you and me, okay? You don't have to tell anybody that I asked you this question and you answered it. Uh, Jose Ramirez, he can speak English, can he? Some, yeah, some. I, I tell you what, I, I wish I spoke better Spanish um, so I could, I could really have some strong conversations with him. I'll tell you the other thing, too, Les, that we learned this year in pandemic baseball was that, and you guys probably picked on this watching it at home, you can hear everything from the field. And I wish I knew more Spanish curses because right. I heard a lot of them flying out of both dugouts all season long. Absolutely. Tom Withers is with us. Let's go back to the Browns for a minute or six. Um, what is actually working according to Hoyle here? What did you think was going to happen that has actually happened? And what has happened that you didn't expect? Positive and negative. Yeah, that's a good question. I think the, um, the running game has been exactly what I thought it would be. Um, you know, I think you can make a pretty strong argument that Nick Chubb, if he's not the best running back in the NFL, he's in that top three and, you know, the luxury that they have in having a, a former rushing, a former NFL rushing champion as his backup is as good a luxury as you could have in, in the Western Hemisphere. So I think the running game has been exactly what I thought. I think the playmakers have been what I would have hoped. Um, you know, Beckham, clearly a uh, healthy Beckham is a different Beckham, both from a physical and a mental standpoint. And I think um, there's been a trickle down effect with the way his positivity is kind of... Um, Where do you, you stand know, on Baker? What's that? Where do you stand on Baker Mayfield? 
You know, I'm still a little bit torn, Les. I'm, I'm more of a traditional, can you stand in the pocket and make the throw kind of quarterback guy? And I, I still don't see that from him. I do like the way, though, and I'll, I'll compliment Stefanski on this as well, both he and offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt. I think they've done a nice job of playing to Baker's strengths, which is getting him outside the pocket, which is rolling him out and having him throw on the run. So, um, you know, his second half numbers have not been good, but I would like to see out of Baker when they get into the point where they have a, a game that comes down the stretch is him to, you know, lead the team on that game winning touchdown drive. He hasn't had to do it yet. Um, but that doesn't mean that that's not coming soon. So, um, you know, I, I think he's shown by his commitment in the off season that he's taken his job seriously. I think he's played pretty well. Um, you know, I think he can be a lot better. I think he knows he can be a lot better, but I also like the fact that he's been, tough on himself as well, where he comes out after the game on Sunday and says, that's the worst I've played all year and I've got to be better for us to be better. So that's been refreshing as well to hear a more humble Baker Mayfield, if you will. Yeah. Has the um, offensive uh, mindset of the the Browns coaching staff, have they they dummied it down a little bit? Because if they have, you you wouldn't know it. I mean, if the game plan is to dummy down the playbook for Baker, uh, they're either very good at it or they didn't need to do it. No, I think they, I think almost the opposite less in a way, you know, we've seen some of the trick plays, like I said, I think they've just managed games really well. And I think that might be alarming to us because we haven't seen games managed well all that much over the last 20 years. So I think, you know, again, Stefanski's job in, in play calling and clock management has been something that's been very refreshing for, for, you know, Browns fans to see over the first five games. Um, you know, also, I, I don't think they wanted to, to show everything they had in that first game against Baltimore. I think it was intentional the way they played that. I don't think they wanted to reveal everything that we've seen over the last couple of weeks. And, and again, you know, when you have that bread and butter attack where you can just hand the ball off to a runner like Nick Chubb or Kareem Hunt and know that you're going to get four or five yards a crack, that makes things a lot easier for any offense. Tom Withers of the Associated Press is here. He has given the ceremonial honor of tossing out the first question and most Browns press conferences. Do you, do you have that at the other other sports? I'm not, or do you have to work? Is that a different uh, voting block? It's kind of by default. I think a lot of the media <laughs> in this town just kind of turned to me like, okay, Withers, go ahead and get it out of the way. Right, right. We never push your way to the front of the line anyway. So I, I hear you. All right, Northeast Factory Direct, three great locations in addition to the uh, uh, to the uh, website you want to check out, northeastfactorydirect.com. West 140th Street, uh, that is in uh, Cleveland near the airport, Euclid Avenue, uh, Euclid, Ohio, rather, as well as the freeway uh, drive, and that's in Macedonia, Northeast Factory Direct. Tom Withers and I return in a moment. More sports and less Levine is powered by Cleveland.com. Transform your home for the holidays with an authentic Nature Stone garage floor. No more tripping on cracked, uneven concrete. Stop slipping on puddles and standing water. It's the safer, more beautiful garage floor that's easy to clean and never needs replaced. That's why it's backed by Russell's Promise. For a limited time, get more Nature Stone than ever before with up to half your garage floor free. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com to qualify for your free flooring. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. We're still working on that, slowing them down. But uh, 
you know, I've, I've coached against Ben a few times, uh, probably four or five times uh, over the last four, four or five years. Um, he looks the same uh, to me. Uh, I mean, you see him throwing the ball with accuracy down the field. Um, you see the underneath throws. He has total command of the off offense. Um, he's hard to deal with, and we're definitely going to be at our best, man, to, to come away with the win. Hey, Coach, I was just wondering, um, what do you see in that receiving core, and how, how much attention will you pay to Chase Claypool next week or this weekend, given what he did last week against yeah. Philly? We are definitely paying attention to him, but they have some other weapons. That is uh, one thing, uh, you know, playing against these guys that, it's tough. I mean, you look across the board, you know, all the receivers, the backs, the tight ends. I mean, they have matchup concerns all over the field. So we're going to do a good job um, really executing our techniques, uh, mixing up the coverages, but at the same time, having the ability to take away a few guys if we need to. Now, the coaches uh, trying to do their best to uh, downplay uh, the Miles Garrett situation from last year. Um, None of those coaches were there, but they've made it. They've all seen. Obviously, they've seen it and talked about it, and that's the decision they made. Just stay away from it. It's the right decision, isn't it? Absolutely, Les. I think the the more they can minimize that going in, probably the better. It's um, it's clearly a major storyline. It's the it's the backstory of this week. You know, I think it's good from the Browns' standpoint that they are four and one and, and playing as well as they are. So. You know, some of the attention is on the team and not specifically just on Miles. So um, it's going to be interesting. You know, um, you know, I think he's probably bracing for a little bit of backlash, clearly from the 5,500 fans that are going to be there or whatever. But it's not 68,000, and I think it's I think he's got something legitimately to worry about in terms of retribution from the Steelers. I'm not saying that those guys are going to take a cheap shot at him necessarily, but I think that's got to be somewhere in the back of his mind that, you know, he doesn't want to get to get cut while he's, you know, um, making a move towards trying to get Roethlisberger or whatever the case may be. So um, it is still a major storyline this week. Uh, the Browns have done it in, in my mind from a PR standpoint, a good job in kind of minimizing it. Uh, we don't talk to Garrett until tomorrow. Um, and it's going to be, I think, pretty difficult maybe <laughs> to get, uh, what we want out of him just in terms of what this means to him and, and, and whether he's put it in his, his past or not. What, what is that figure on uh, Roethlisberger? 16 wins in a row at Three Rivers? Yeah, they've won. Or Heinz, uh, the sorry, Browns Field. Lost, yeah, the Browns have lost 16 in a row at Heinz Field. And I actually was looking that up today, Les. I don't know if you realize the Browns are 6-41 and 41 in Pittsburgh since 1970. They also had a 16-game losing streak at Three Rivers, if people remember, from 1970 to 1986. And once they ended it, they did reel off three in a row there. So I think Browns fans have to hope that maybe, you know, history will repeat itself and they can kind of turn the corner because, you know, that win in, in 86 really propelled the Browns over those next couple of years. Those are those Bernie years, you know, the, the glory years here over the last, you know, four, four decades or so. Would it be blasphemy if I said that that this is a huge game for the Browns, but it's not the end all be all if it doesn't work out their way because there's way still way too much to go in the in the uh, actual season? That's not blasphemous at all. I think that's exactly accurate, Les. I you know I was trying to get that out of some of the players today, which is that we all acknowledge this is a big game. How do you not let it become too big? And that's been Stefanski's you know mantra since since week one here is that. We got to go one and zero this week, and I know that just sounds like coach speak, but his guys seem really seem to be buying into it. They've really been able to to focus on the task at hand and the assignment in, in front of them. And um, again, that's a credit to a to a young coach and his staff to be able to get them to buy in like that. Yeah, I think when the Browns were trying to stay away from uh, going winless under Hugh Jackson, uh, each game might have meant something. This doesn't at this point in the season. In fact, I heard. I heard Jim Nance talking yesterday that you almost have to play it like, um, yeah, I mean, you want to win the game, but if if, if the if the uh, uh, COVID stuff gets worse, they may have to cancel games, uh, move games around, and you may not play Pittsburgh again. 
That's so true. And I, that's why I'm kind of holding my breath as far as the Beckham situation is concerned, you know, um, granted, we, we don't know yet whether he's, he's positive or not, but you think about the, the repercussions, if something did come back with one of the Browns players being positive and how that could affect everything, not only this week, but going forward. So it's the new reality we live in Les, you know, I think this thing is not going away anytime soon and, and we're just going to have to deal with it going forward. But I think that's why the NFL is kind of le leaving things open-ended in terms of some of these bye weeks and the potential for the season getting pushed back even further than it already is. All right, what's the key to stopping the Steelers on offense and what's the key to stopping the Steelers on defense? Of course, it's not a fair question because the, the Browns have so many uh, injuries involved, but what as, as they get ready for this particular game under this particular uh, circumstance, what do they have to do offensively and defensively? I think offensively, they've got to do what's got them to this point, which is run the ball effectively, uh, you know, mix in some play action, hope that Baker doesn't make any mistakes. You know, he went two games without throwing an interception, and then, boy, he was flirting with it last week, less in the first half. You know, he was he was high on every throw just about, and both Beckham and Landry bailed him out with, like, circus-like catches. So um, at halftime, I was saying to myself and to a couple others in the press box that, you know, Baker's really on the verge of throwing a couple picks here, and that's exactly what he did in the second half. So uh, he's just got to he's just got to play smart and, and stay within himself and not try to do too much. And I think as long as they're able to 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 run the ball effectively and um, stay out of third and long situations, that they should be okay from a defensive standpoint. Less they've got to stop giving up those big chunk plays. You know, um, I think the Browns have done a pretty good job as far as stopping the run so far, but. You know, they've still, because of injuries to that secondary and that linebacking core, they're still giving up a lot of big plays, uh, whether it's a 10-yard catch that turns into a 30-yard gain or whatever the case may be. So, um, you know, unfortunately, their safeties are banged up again. Uh, Greedy Williams went on the injured reserve this week. So uh, defensive coordinator Joe Woods, who you just showed a couple minutes ago, has really had to patch things together, and he's going to have to patch it together this Sunday as well. So what do you do with, if you're the Browns? Do you continue to try the running game even though you don't have your number one runner? Thankfully, they have the number two guy. Uh, what do you do there? And what do you do? Um, wh what do you do? Just pretend he's he's still there and everything's fine? Yeah, I think what you do, Les, is that, yeah, you try to run it with Hunt, but I think you also can have, you know, those short passes to Hunt and, and guys out of the backfield or your tight ends that, are essentially nothing more than than running plays, right? I mean, if you can just run those two and three yard outs or whatever the case may be, or or have a back go over the middle and just kind of sit down and 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 make a catch, that's essentially you know what would be a, a four to five to six yard run. So I think again, it's it's not trying to do too much. Um, and you know, I could be totally I could be totally wrong here. Uh, they may come out and run the Statue of Liberty on first down. And um, you know what what I've liked about Stefanski so far this year as well has been his aggressiveness. You know, he's not been afraid to throw a trick play in there early or uh, or really mix things up. I, I get the feeling, Les, and I mentioned him earlier, I think you're going to see Baker Mayfield go to Austin Hooper a little bit more going forward here. I think he's really starting to develop a little more chemistry with him. Uh, teams have done a good job at, at times of, of taking him away. And I think the more that Landry and Beckham can stretch things outside the numbers, then you're going to be able to see that tight end work in work inside a little bit more. Same with Njoku. So again, I think keep the play calling simple. Um, try to run it if you can, and uh, and don't make any mistakes. That's well, the key. I, I thought you made a great point when you, you said they're they're out there. They're they're letting uh, they're doing all kinds of wild things out there, but they're under control. It, it's not like mad cat. It's not like uh, you know fire drills and anything like that. They seem to be under control. Uh, I think he's only made one bad mistake, and it's turned out since they've they've, they've went on to win since then. I, I don't know that I would have gone that way in the first game against uh, uh, against uh, uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, I yeah. think uh, I wouldn't have taken that punt, but it's hard to argue because he's been. Yeah. you know. That was like that's been that's basically been his one mess up so far, hasn't it, Les? And I, I think what, that's the only one. About, yeah, and think about over the last couple of years, how many times, to your point. How many times they look disorganized, whether it was a play coming in late from the sideline or, you know, the play clock running down to the final seconds and then having to rush the playoff 
We haven't seen any of that. It's no, really I, looked I like I don't a, recall losing five. I, I, first of all, I, I don't recall losing five yards because of the, getting the play in late. But more importantly, you it used to be you make a big play and automatically you're saying, okay, who who's this foul on? What number is it? Is it a lineman or a defensive back? And it <laughs> turns out they're not blowing whistles now. So maybe the Browns are getting a little more respect than they were getting in the past. Who knows? I, I think I think that's a fair point. I think that um, with winning and with quality wins, that's what comes with it, right? I think there was sure. a, for a while there, they were just the, the, the woe be gone, you know, let's step all over the Browns every chance we can get. And those days may be ending. Yeah. Some of these uh, referees and they get their assignments. They say, oh, no, I got to go to Cleveland. I don't think it's that way anymore from a technical aspect. Right now, it's Smiley One. They're making it very easy to invest in a new heating or cooling comfort system without breaking your budget for a limited time only. Take advantage of their uh, special financing, 36 months on selected Bryant high-efficiency equipment. They make it easy for you and your family to stay comfortable all year long. Call Smiley One for further details. We'll come on back in a moment. Uh, Tom Withers is with us. More sports in West Levine is powered by Cleveland.com. We're living in uncertain times, but you don't have to put your future on hold. At Tri-C, you can move ahead while staying safe and saving money. The majority of fall classes will take place online, but we've added a variety of formats to meet your learning needs, and we've taken many steps to keep you safe on campus. Whether you're ready to get started or your four-year plans have changed, check out Tri-C's programs and resources, because Tri-C is where futures begin. Well, hello everyone. Let me tell you a little bit about Brown's Football Insider. For only $3.99 a month, you can get texts sent right to your phone each day from me, Dan Lobby, Scott Pasco, and Ellis Williams. In addition to that, you'll receive a Football Insider newsletter every day with special things from us, uh, things that you won't see anywhere else on the site. Uh, you'll get breaking news, analysis, features, film breakdown, and things like that. Texting us directly gives you a great chance to cut through the clutter of Facebook, Twitter, other social media, and avoid the trolls. Also, it's the only way to get your questions on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast. So why should you sign up? Try a 14-day free trial. You can cancel at any time. All it takes is one text, but you won't want to cancel. We have hundreds of subscribers join us over the last year. They love it and have stayed with us. We're seeing the Football Insider community grow every week and it's only $3.99 a month, which is less than 14 cents a day. What I like most about Football Insider is the opportunity to connect with you one-on-one -on -one and really communicate with you. So how can you become a Football Insider? You can click on cleveland.com slash browns, the blue banner at the top of the page, or easier yet, text me at 216-208-3965. Again, that's 216-208-3965. Three, nine, six, five. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at SmileyOne.com. Hi, welcome back to more sports in Les Levine. Les, Tom, we give a lot of praise to Andrew Barry for turning this Browns team around. Right now they're 4 and one But Jim Nance of CBS Sports says, let's not forget about John Dorsey. He says, I thought John Dorsey did a fantastic job of turning over that roster. I'm not taking anything away from Andrew Barry because I'm hearing wonderful things about him, but I think the Browns were putting together a legitimate roster when John got here. I think that was when this became a team that was actually on path and on the road to doing something special. The puzzle has been put together. I think Cleveland is going to be a factor for a long time. We look at John Dorsey, what he did in over a couple years. A lot of skill positions on the offense is credit to John Dorsey. He brought in Jarvis Landry, Baker Mayfield, Nick Chubb, Odell Beckham, and Kareem Hunt. So, Les, Tom, my question to you is this. When you look at Andrew Barry and when you look at John Dorsey and where the Browns are right now, 
who deserves more credit for getting the Browns to this point? Well, when a team is bad, we always play the credit, blame, credit or blame card. You don't have to have credit and blame each and every time, right? Yeah, I, I don't think you can in this in this situation only because Andrew Barry has only been here back here for what ten months now, right? He came back right. in in January, roughly. So we'll give him some time. Um, but but I, I think that's a fair point that, that Jim makes and Brian makes up. They, you know, the fact that Landry and Beckham are on this team, the fact that Nick Chubb is on this team, the fact that Baker Mayfield is on this team, those are the playmakers. Miles Garrett is the playmaker on defense. Um, you know, whoever's responsible for bringing him in. But I, I do I do agree with that in that that Dorsey got the Browns back to, and he talked about it a lot, was, you know, reawakening that sleeping giant. And I think he, as much as anything, just kind of maybe reinstilled, if that's the right word, <laughs> a, a, a confidence in the in the fan base. I think people felt like they finally had the right football guy in charge. Uh, again, that's not a knock on Andrew Berry at all. He's a young GM. This is his, his first year on the job. Uh, and, and only time will tell what he's able to do with this roster. But I think those core pieces that Dorsey did bring in I, definitely lit the foundation for this team being on yeah, the right path. For I, you, I'm so. not putting this in the blame department, but it seemed to me that Dorsey got off to a fast start. Everything seemed to go his way. He got cocky a little bit and tried some things that maybe he might not have done otherwise. And But either way, you don't have one without the other. Yeah, you know, there's still days that I'm I'm surprised that he's not here less. You know, I mean, we all we all felt like that maybe Freddie Kitchens was a little bit overmatched last year, but I didn't think uh, that we would have a, a coaching change and then another front office change immediately after it or or subsequent to it. So um, I, I do give John Dorsey a lot of credit, and like I said, I think I think Browns fans look at it the same way. All right, uh, big news for Mr. Gullible. We've found some of his uh, How Come Quickies. One actually stuck to another piece of paper, and we couldn't find it. We're looking for two, and there was only one, and it wasn't any good. But we apologize. It's our fault. We'll take the hit. Northeast Factory Direct, three locations plus the website, northeastfactorydirect.com. More sports in Les Levine in his 25th consecutive year is powered by cleveland.com. Transform your home for the holidays with an authentic Nature Stone basement floor. Add more livable space, inhibit the growth of mold and mildew, and improve air quality for your family. It's the healthier, more beautiful basement floor that's easy to clean and never needs replaced. That's why it's backed by Russell's Promise. For a limited time, get more Nature Stone than ever before with up to half your basement floor free. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com to qualify for your free flooring. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Downs and Casino has sports betting. Use one of our 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet and watch your favorite games on one of our many HD televisions or visit our sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Being in the league for so long, I think he has some film or, or footage on everything. And I think every week it's been pretty cool where he'll pull something from when he was with the Jets or, you know, when he was with the Cowboys and he'd be like, we ran this play against a similar defense and I think it's going to work for us this week. And, and he'll, he'll throw up a clip and, and we'll watch it a few times and be like, this is what I was teaching the guys. Now I'm doing it a little differently, but he just has so much experience where each week he can pull something from, you know, a defense that he's played against or a coordinator.
that he feels like gives us a, a little bit of a chance, you know, just a small changeup that's that's going to give us a chance to do something, um, you know, big on offense. And, and his in-game demeanor, you know, he's, he's a very intense guy at practice. We're, we're always working and stuff. And then we get in the game and it's just like, he, I feel like he's just like a mad scientist trying to figure out what the next play, what the next run can hit and, and work, you know, watching the defense and, and seeing how they're reacting to our formations and motions and, and all types of, you know, gap or zone schemes. It's just, it's just been a, a real pleasure to, you know, see how he works and, and all that knowledge that he has stored in there. Nate Oreck, you have our next question. Joel, you, you've made the Pro Bowl a couple times, but I wanted to know, uh, it, I'm sure you take something from, from each coach. Is there something specific that you think you've gotten better at um, because of Bill Callahan? Yeah, um, it's really, you know, for me, um, getting on guys a little bit quicker in pass, bro. You know, he, uh, he he's an advocate. I, I mean, it really depends on on what play and stuff we're using. But using my hands a little bit better in pass protection and, and doing things that you see some of the guys that he's coached, you know, Brandon Sheriff, Zach Martin, some of these guys that do really well and just taking little – little tidbits and pass protection, using your hands a little bit better, you know, shaving angles and pass protection, just things that, you know, are, are pretty complex, you know, when you go to a line play, but things that he's worked with and, and know work and give you a little bit of an advantage than, you know, other online coaches. Tom, I think Callahan was the first coach signed, or at least the first major coach signed. He probably had his choice of a couple different teams. Why do you think he came here? Stefanski? I think that was part of it, Les. I, you know, I think he, he probably, like we were talking about with the playmakers, I think he was probably excited about working with guys like Landry and Mayfield and Chubb and, and Beckham and, and seeing what, what he could do with them. I, I think uh, Stefanski was probably part of it. I think from the Browns' standpoint, it was important for them to, to bring in somebody of that caliber, somebody who's been an NFL head coach, to serve as you know, a sounding board and a, and a mentor, if you will, to, to Kevin Stefanski. I think it also shows you know, the confidence that Kevin Stefanski has in his own skin to be able to bring in, you know, a, a coach of that regard and, and not feel threatened by it. That's not always been the case, as we know here in Cleveland. So, you know, from day one of camp, Les, all we've heard from players, especially the offensive linemen, clearly, because they work with him on an everyday basis, is how much Bill Callahan has meant to this team so far. He's done a, a terrific job, like like so many of the other coaches, I you know, I, not only Callahan, but I think that, as I mentioned earlier, I think the job that Joe Woods has done um, with losing one defensive player after another has been nothing short of remarkable so far. We talked earlier about uh, this date in history and uh, that, of course, Kirk Gibson with the home run shot off uh, Dennis Eckersley. Cavaliers lost their 15th straight uh, game starting off the franchise back in 1970. They then they won a game against Portland, and then they came back and lost 12 more. So they were 1-27. And Hugh Jackson, nobody heard of Hugh Jackson at that point. No. Could you imagine one in 27? That, that's no way to start a franchise, is it? <laughs> but we, hey, that's not too different from what the Browns did the first couple of years right. here, those, um, those exactly. glorious expansion days of 1999 and 2000. Right, so, right. All right, we're going to we're coming back one more time with uh, Tom Withers. And uh, Monday, uh, Bud Shaw will be here. Tuesday night, it will be Mary Kay Cabot. Wednesday night, Dennis uh, Manloff. And uh, Thursday, and next week, I have no idea. But we'll, we'll have somebody for you, that's for sure. Let's take a break. We'll come on back in a moment. More sports and less than right here on Cleveland.com. Transform your home for the holidays with an authentic Nature Stone garage floor. No more tripping on cracked, uneven concrete. Stop slipping on puddles and standing water. It's the safer, more beautiful garage floor that's easy to clean and never needs replaced. That's why it's backed by Russell's Promise. For a limited time, get more Nature Stone than ever before with up to half your garage floor free. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com to qualify for your free flooring. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen, for old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget, Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. 
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Mr. Gullible is going to be upset. He's probably calling all his friends to call and say, go listen to the How Come Quickie they're going to read. Unfortunately, we won't be able to do that. I'll, I'll explain why if I get a chance to email you. Dan Lobby will join. That's Dan on the left, by the way. Dan Lobby will join the winner's edition with Dave Bacon, and uh, that's the weekend winners coming up tomorrow right here on Cleveland.com. All right, Tom, uh, quickly, uh, you have a prediction for the game this Sunday afternoon. Wow. <laughs> It's yeah, a, it's I have tough. to think about this for a second. I think a lot of it's going to hinge, obviously, less on, on the condition of Baker Mayfield and Odell Beckham. So uh, I'm going to hold out for the moment. I know that's a, a cheap way of getting out of making a prediction right now, but those are two major players. And I, I'll, give, I'll say this. I'll give the Browns a good chance to win if both of those guys play. All right, so we're marking down Tom Withers here for 24-23 uh, Cleveland. Go ahead. <laughs> you can you can hold me to it. Tom, you're terrific. Thanks, Tom. Terrific. Hey, where did we come up with that? Great job as always. We'll talk to you soon. Let's well, stay well. Good to see you. Thank you, Tom. Always a pleasure. All right, that'll do it for us. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you uh, Monday night. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent.